All right, what up ladies and gents? It's your favorite Asian robot right here. In the background, you're gonna see footage from our previous uh, stream where we took on a Shava because this weekend, after the whole server slam thing, it's become quite common, I see on Blizzard forums, for people to say things like, I'm about to request a refund because this weekend was an absolute shit show. All right, now I've blurred this person's name and whatever to protect their identity. Obviously, I've got nothing against them, right? But I found this comment really weird because they said 15 minutes battle with Ashava with a team of 12 level 20s and we barely managed to get the boss below 75%. I sent out messages to all my friends and clanmates who are playing Diablo 4 this weekend. Of the 23 responses, not a single person was able to kill Ashava, not one. Sounds like the clan is shit, bro, because Robot Nation did it. You know, just three people. Um, but of course, we had randos assisting us. It's a world boss, duh. But maybe you guys should come over to Robot Nation because we will actually guide you on how to kill a Shava. Um, Blizzard completely lost the plot on this one. Grossly excessive nerfs to uh, Necros and Rogues. I agree on the, on the Rogues part. Not really to the Necros. Grossly decreased drops because the previous beta, we were not supposed to get legendaries all the time, FYI. This is... At the actual drop rate, this is how it's actually supposed to work. Rares are supposed to be rares. Legendaries are supposed to be legendaries. You're level 20, you literally started the game. Does nobody remember Diablo 2? Because this is how it was in Diablo 2. Diablo 3 had better drop rates, in my opinion. But uh, the world tier also doesn't influence drop rate, as far as I know. Just putting that out there. Um... Taking the comment down, off, down, <laughs> not taking it down, taking it off, let me just show you that I was actually playing the Necromancer when this happened. The link to this stream is in the description of this video, and because of the sunlight in Australia, sorry, I have to increase the brightness so that I don't appear to be living in the darkness like my Necromancer. Okay, sorry about that. Anyway, the actual footage from stream with timestamps for our Shava fight, a Shava win, Kordragon at World Tier 2, where we fought level 30s, is all in the description of this video. Well, the link to the stream is there and the timestamps are in the description of that stream, so you can just immediately go there. But basically, we beat a Shava pretty much thoroughly. Now, we did take almost the entire duration, but you can see how many people are fighting a Shava and it's not that many. This is World Tier 1. So if you were not able to do it in World Tier 2, well, duh. The last time we were able to do that because we had legendaries out the Huazu. Every single one of us were decked out in legendaries, all upgraded. Of course, Tier 2 Ashava, like we would still die, but Tier 2 Ashava was next to nothing because we could literally survive everything. Here, if you actually fought a Shava, and when you actually see the footage of the fight, what I was constantly having to do was I took passives that gave me corpses all the time when I was activating my abilities, and my skeletons actually stayed up quite a bit. All right, they didn't they didn't die all that much, and you can actually, like I said, check out the footage. Of course, you'll see my fugly face and my resting bitch face at the same time, which I'm sure you'd enjoy. But the Ashava fight was not that difficult. Yes, we died a couple of times, but as long as you had a good grasp of the mechanics, which again. It's possible because Robot Nation, we have a lot of gamers from different walks of life. Tower defense pros, we've got MOBA pros, we've got monster hunting pros, that's me. Uh, we have tide game pros, that's also me. So, realistically speaking, we understand games in a, in a bit of a different way. We don't, we're not just Diablo players, which I think gives us a bit of a different perspective on this. Because we treated this one like a monster hunting fight, basically. Hunting down Ashava was basically all about knowing his frames, his attack frames, and his hitboxes as well. Like, you'll see right there that if you stand right literally at Ashava's ass, okay, he does not hit you. He, his attacks do not actually touch you, which means your skeletons can still survive. My skeletons are still going right there. Sure, some of them got poisoned, but they're certainly not fragile, especially if you invest in your skeletons because you literally don't need to invest in anything else. In case you guys didn't know or recall from Diablo 2 min-maxing, one skill point is enough for most of your offensive skills to actually do work because strength, uh, well, the damage mostly comes from gear, all right? And if you at least had a bit of upgraded gear, or at least you upgraded your gear to two pips, um, it was possible to fight a Shava. And I actually played four different characters over that weekend, so I didn't really even grind one. 
Whereas that dude said he grinded one character for 15 hours. Like, homie, yo, maybe that was the issue. We, in fact, managed to stun a Shava several times during the fight, and we killed it with about 30 seconds remaining. As you can see, there weren't that many people at the fight. So if you had 12 people, you were more than capable of doing it at Tier 1. If you could not do it on Tier 2, of course not. He was not designed for you guys to be able to do at Tier 2. Tier 2 is a veteran difficulty. The monsters are obviously going to hit harder. But just so you know, if you actually go on my channel, several people did comment that they actually managed to do it at Level 2. One stream viewer, I can't remember which stream it was on, but they actually said, yeah, we killed Level 2 Ashava twice. So that was very respectable. Um, another dude commented on one of my streams, Jay, I don't, I have the comment here to pull up, but basically he commented that, um, he did actually manage to beat a Shava at level two. It just took a lot of coordination. So it is doable. And in fact, the first time I did it on my rogue, we got a Shava down to 75% and then he went ham because I think people just don't realize that a Shava is a bit of a raid boss. He has mechanics that you have to understand, frames that you have to understand and hitboxes. Again, you, everyone is welcome to Robot Nation when we start our clan. Um, we will happily welcome everybody that just, all you have to do is pop by the stream. We'll welcome you in. And if you need help and uh, need assistance understanding the game, we will do our best to help you. Um, I'm going to be focusing on the Necromancer first because I'm a Necromain. But pretty much after that, I plan on also doing Sorcerer and Barbarian. Okay. Um, and right after this, all right, just, just for the sake of showing you, um, I don't have it time stamped on the stream yet. You will, by the time you guys actually see this video, you will actually have all, we will actually have all the timestamps there, but basically fighting a Shava was easy. We won. All right. Which you saw in the background right there. We fought a Shava. If we go to, now we changed the world tier to two at, uh, two hours, 22 minutes. And yeah, that'll go. So if you watch for just a little while here, we swap the world tier to two. Okay. You can see my, you can see my, you know, uh, the, the YouTube video title and all that. Yeah. We swap the world tier back to two. So, so, so just in case you think we did Quartragon on world tier one, no, we only did a Shava on world tier one because we wanted to guarantee the clear. But after that, we swapped to world tier two and Again, you can you can choose to watch the whole stream if you like, but straight after that, we went to Cordragon where we died many, many times, but we also had fun fighting level, you know, 30 creatures, all right? It was an absolutely fun experience, party of four, all robot nation. Like, this, this is what I'm trying to express, that a lot of people say, I'm going to refund the game, it's so bad. Like, guys, game is, compared to several other games, where there's even more fight mechanics that you have to understand. This game is not difficult. A good build. And don't worry, I'll be bringing you builds that do not rely on legendaries. Every build that I do, I promise you, will be tested bare. Meaning that the build should function on its own merits. Okay? Um, why will I be doing this? Because I understand that getting legendaries, getting specific legendaries, and one thing which I've always hated, but was never able to do because I've never really created content for Diablo before this, but one of the things that I hate the most is when a person says, oh, well, you're going to need this legendary, this unique, this, that. Like, dude, that takes so much farming to even get. So a build should function on its own merits, pretty much. And there are means and ways to do this with the Necromancer. Um, if you take a look at the Quartragon footage just for a little while, you know, I, I've got sound muted because I don't want you to hear me on the stream and then me commenting on this video. But basically, the Quartragon fights... Uh, it's all about generating enough corpses with your Necromancer so that you can use Corpse Explosion, but also revive your skeletons as needed. And even taking on the Elites at level 30 with World Tier 2 was not altogether too difficult. The Necromancer has some of the highest sustain in the game um, and can literally out-survive everybody. As you can see, my HP drops, but I don't rely on potions that much. I actually just spam my... Uh, my blood skills. I do use potions every now and again, but a lot of the healing that I did relied on my passives and my blood skills. Um, same for the rogue McStabbins there. He was able to sustain himself off his attacks mostly, which was pretty insane. He went blade, he went uh, dagger rogue, which uh, as you can see, he is taking damage, but he's basically just healing himself using a potion every now and again. It gets insane. It, it genuinely does. Of course, we died several times during this, but 
it was a very fun experience and certainly not impossible. So ladies and gents, the only thing I want to say is that if you are part of the crowd that says a Shava was difficult and, you know, you start requesting a refund, what I'm going to say is that a Shava was not difficult. A Shava just needed to be done on World Tier 1 and if you missed out on the Mountain Reward, I'm sorry for you. But choose your clan well, choose the people that you associate with well, and choose your streamers well. Um, Robot Nation will be open for everybody. Okay, don't don't end up like here where you couldn't do challenges and stuff because we will cover every event. We will cover every single thing um, and we want to see you there. All you got to do is show up to the stream and we'll happily invite you into Robot Nation. Okay, we are a casual PvE clan, obviously, but we will cover all the content that you need and we are looking forward to working with you. All right, so if you struggle with Shava, just know that we didn't. We had fun with Korjgon. We had fun with several other things. So, yeah, we would say that this weekend is quite a success. And if you're thinking about refunding, before you think about refunding, reconsider who you're hanging out with because maybe you're just not hanging around the right people. Okay, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy my content. This is The Real Asian Robot with some Diablo 4 commentary. I'll see you there as soon as the game drops. Get you later.